Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss a, a very spicy update to the failure of Boris Johnson's Brexit government to negotiate terms with Norway concerning fishing access. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So we had yet another reminder last week as talks between the UK and Norway collapsed over fishing rights that Brexit has completely screwed the fishing industry over. Boris Johnson promised great benefits to fishing and he hasn't even been able to negotiate equal rights to what we had before we left the EU, much less better ones. But it appears that this isn't as simple as Johnson failing to get the amazing deal that he promised and so coming away with nothing. It seems that the UK government tried to force a renegotiation of terms that existed before we joined the European community in the late 70s, or the early 70s, sorry. Now, what I'm seeing from reports is that our Brexit government didn't seem to realise that Norway would insist on retaining the treaty that it agreed with us decades ago. Which is a little bit odd when you consider that Norway is actually a major fishing nation. See, for us, even in the EU, fishing represented close to 0% of our economy. I mean, now it's actually going to be 0%, I suspect, not just rounded off. In Norway, it's much more significant. Fishing is a much bigger deal to them than it is to us. The other thing to bear in mind is that Norway doesn't particularly need a separate fishing agreement with us. So they were the side that could most easily walk away. That's not to say that they don't want agreement with us, they absolutely do. But it's proportionally much less of a problem for them not to have one. Besides, with fishing being a much more important part of the Norwegian economy, the lobbying there is stronger. You know, even if the Norwegian government were minded to accept a weak deal from the UK for whatever mad reason, it would be more difficult for them to do so without a huge political backlash. In this respect, the UK needed to come up with something that the Norwegian fishing industry would be happy with. Now, although it looks like ministers have attempted to engage with them directly, no progress, as far as I could tell, at all. So, I mean, in the UK, the fishing industry is weak. I don't just mean a small portion of our economy. I mean, it's actually just weak as a lobbying force. They've been completely screwed and they're doing nothing. The latest I've read is that they will lobby ministers. That's their latest plan. They're, I read the headlines. I mean, I did the video last week on it. And then afterwards, there was another article. And it said the fishing industry were furious. I thought, oh, are they furious? Oh, are they going to do something now, are they? What are they going to do? They're going to lobby ministers. I mean, to say, how has that gone so far? Been lobbying ministers for years about Brexit. What good did that do? Take your boats and block something of national strategic importance or just go and find different jobs. Lobbying ministers after everything they've done just makes you look weak, impotent, pathetic. But anyway, a result of not agreeing terms, there are British fishing vessels that cannot now operate. All of the cod that we eat in this country now will be supplied by Norwegian fishing companies, paying their taxes in Norway, generating processing jobs in Norway. When the talks collapsed last week, George Eustace said on behalf of the UK government that we made a fair offer to them. Well, I mean, that being said, what, what's a fair offer ultimately? When it comes to international negotiations or indeed any negotiations, there's no such thing as fair. There is what you can get the other side to accept. But when it comes to fair, I'm not, I'm not sure I found out what it was exactly they were offering Norway. What it wasn't was a deal as good as what they already had. Because the other thing to bear in mind is that Norway has not lost any access to markets or waters around Europe for its fishing industry. We have had both severely curtailed, with some fish impossible to sell throughout the continent now. Again, this puts the onus on us to agree something with Norway, not on Norway to agree something with us. According to the Norwegian press on this, the UK thought that Norway would accept a much worse set of arrangements than before Brexit. I mean, I can believe that in a way, because remember how Brexiteers told us that the world would be banging on our door for great trade deals as soon as we left the EU. The distressing thing is that these weren't always lies. Some influential Tories actually seem to be of the belief that people around the world would accept worse deals with us, from their point of view, rather than have nothing at all. 
What they didn't understand is that they don't have nothing at all. They have deals with the EU and other countries around the world representing a much larger and more important market. We are the ones who gave up a huge chunk of our trading agreements. Norway is certainly of the belief that this failure to reach agreement is going to cost the UK more than them. Norway's fisheries minister has said that they will not accept an agreement that is not at least as good as the one they had before Brexit. Again, what a government says they will insist on and what they actually insist on are not always the same thing. But like I said, the fishing lobby in Norway is a formidable force for a government to try and screw over. So in this regard, it is believable. It's absolutely believable that the Norwegian government wouldn't sell them down the river. It's reasonable to suppose that the Norwegian government do not have the political power, even if they had the will, to agree worse terms than they had before the Brexit that was no fault of theirs. It was also mentioned that Norway and the EU have agreed terms on stocks and quota exchanges recently. I mean, it's always going to come down to this with Brexit. The UK fishing industry loses out on everything if we think we can get a better deal anywhere than we had in the EU. We can't. We're not, we're not strong enough. How stupid do you need to be to think that an individual part of the EU could be as strong or stronger as the whole thing assembled? Now, this doesn't mean that there won't be an agreement at some point, but the point is that it won't be this year and it will not be on the terms that the UK government are pushing for right now. Now, this harms Norwegian fishermen. Of course it does. Some of whom won't be able to meet their quotas. But it affects a far greater proportion of British fishermen who have reduced access to fishing waters as well as markets. Norway haven't lost market access. They've not even lost market access in the UK. They still get to sell their stuff to us tariff free. What they've lost is some fishing access to a single coastal nation. Norwegian fishing communities are not going to the wall over this. But there exists the prospects for British fishing communities to do just that. There have been some major operators saying that if the UK government hasn't sorted out the mollusk situation by September, you know, with Brexit agreements, uh, they're having to shut up shop. That'll be it, gone. That industry gone from that area. And, uh, you know, start of the next season, I suppose that is when that is. And it appears that the UK walked away from the talks with Norway to show that they were strong. That's what I'm seeing. Um, I mean, that also checks out. After all, when one side walks away from talks, it's usually the one that won't accept what the other side is demanding. Because, I mean, this was the other way around. Norway just wanted a status quo agreement. You know, the sort that Liz Truss has been photocopying around the world. You know, all these claims you'll be reading in the Express at the moment. Liz Truss, oh, we've got all these trade deals. Isn't it fantastic? It's like, no, they're the same trade deals we had when we were in the EU. You photocopied them. They're on the same terms. You haven't actually agreed anything on better terms anywhere. Well, if that was, if getting the same terms as being in the EU is a big win for Britain, well, why don't we want that with Norway then? It was the UK that were demanding that Norway have reduced access, reduced quotas. Now, under these conditions, you'd actually have expected it be Norway to walk away and go, no, this isn't acceptable. You're not being serious. We're off. But they were carrying on discussions. They, they didn't mind. So, yeah, you can absolutely believe this is some brainless scheme to show them that we're serious so that, you know, the idea is right. You're not accepting it. We're leaving. And then we'll come back to the negotiating table later this year. We're going to say, look, we've showed you that we're serious about walking away. So will you be more reasonable this time? The problem is that Norway will, first of all, look at its fishing industry, which will be suffering but getting by and, and getting by quite well and also recognise that it would be political suicide to take them on. They will, because after, bear in mind, if they accept the terms that the UK government want, then the Norwegian fishing industry suffers more than it is now with no deal. That's the, that's, the, that's the maddening situation the UK government don't seem to get. A no deal isn't worse than, than the weak deal that's on offer. They'll then look at the UK fishing industry, which will be on its arse from not only lack of fish, but lack of market access to the fish they can catch. They'll also see a fishing lobby in the UK that has no follow through and recognise that actually the UK government, unlike the Norwegian government, the UK government can agree to whatever it likes. And no matter how badly it screws over its own fishing industry, 
those fishermen won't do a blind thing about it because they haven't been. Under those circumstances, someone tell me what on earth would persuade the Norwegian government to think that they have to move a single inch to get an agreement with the UK. And under those same circumstances, what on earth would make you think that the UK government is really serious about standing firm for a better fishing agreement with Norway when it wouldn't do it with the EU? Frankly, the fishing industry seems to have dropped all demands for better fishing deals in this country, apart from some Brexit party loons that are trying desperately to avoid looking like colossal morons and doing pretty badly while they're at it. Most fishermen would now bite your hand off for the same deal we had in the EU. Absolute madness, but there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.